Hello, my name's Simon Muti. My role here is to talk about the new professional practice guidelines from the role of what the BPS are currently calling expert by experience. And by that, what I mean is, in my instance, somebody who has used or has knowledge of the clinical service is provided by clinical psychologists. I've also engaged with other sections of the BPS and then particularly the Division of Clinical Psychology, but I have had quite some experience of meeting up with other disciplines of the BPS, particularly as although they have got a long history of engagement with experts by experience or people who use their services, uh, it's something they're continuing to develop and grow and work with in a co-produced kind of fashion. A um, little bit of history is that I was engaged as an expert by experience with my colleague Joe Hemingfield. And during one of the pre-production drafts of this new document, we were asked to have a look through it and just not critique it as such, but give some of our observations on what we saw within those pages and give some observations about how we might feel that it would flow differently, given that the end user or end beneficiary was going to be people. Um, now, rewardingly, some of the things that we picked up on were some things that we had felt were a little bit perhaps lacking in the in parts and what we felt and also speaking perhaps more from my own perspective because Joe's not with me here today is that there were repeated themes running all the way through the document and it was particularly evident that although different people and I think quite a number of people were involved in its production or were consulted about it but the whole document read in a lovely kind of flow so clearly a great deal of time was put into making sure that it did read in that fashion. Um, a little bit like your sort of seaside stick of rock with a word running right the way through it, there were key themes and as a member of the public then those were themes that I was particularly interested in seeing. Now working as a psychologist you never necessarily know when you enter a room what's going to happen. And it was really important that it was pointed out in that document that you're going to have to actually sit down with your person in the room at that time and find out what needs to happen today. You're probably entering the room with some sort of bare or brief ideas or an outline, especially if you've met them before, but it's emphasised throughout that every single conversation and the work that you do needs to be sort of agreed on before, during and after the process because otherwise you're not going to be working in the best and balanced and collaborative manner. And that collaborative manner is what's going to achieve the best outcomes. So it is the case, there is the reminder going right the way through that every single time you've got to check in with your person or your people. Because the, another element which is emphasised throughout the document is that psychologists are trained and experienced in working with teams, not just individual people. And they can use their extensive training, knowledge and skills and experience to work together with teams to make them work more cohesively. And the same principles apply there, that they don't just go in and say, I'm the psychologist, you will work this way. They ideally would work, or they would work towards reaching an agreement about the best way forward, and that they would ideally, the psychologists would use those skills to make it work for mutual benefit. Now, some of the other things, okay, coming slightly from the clinical psychology kind of background, um, some of the other things that I put, found particularly encouraging were looking into elements of working with people who have, let's say, might say less capacity than Joe Bloggs off the street. One of those examples might well be somebody detained in custody who has very limited rights compared with somebody else. So it's trying to emphasised the importance again of trying to create an environment where they could sit most happily and have those conversations and you can do the best work. Um, other situations might be for example children trying to have a look at the context, the room, the building you're going to be working with and just thinking is this fit for purpose? Or if their parents were in fact the people you're going to be working with, is there somewhere for their children to be where they can see them? And those are just a couple of examples there of just um, reminders that it's so important to try and consider the bigger picture if you want to get the best results. You've just got to think about the people that you're working with. 
Again, like that stick of rock, one of the themes that ran right the way through was that element of co-production and collaborative working, just because without that, you're just not going to be get the best results. Moving a little bit further into the document, there were elements that actually start to become al almost, almost political, but non-partisan and really with a small p. And that is to do with the, the idea that psychologists are actually working from a very responsible position and do, in some circumstances, have a great deal of power that they can use usefully. So, encouragingly, there is uh, an emphasis in certain parts of the document that encourages psychologists that wherever they see some form of injustice or some form of uh, behaviour which is inappropriate or not useful, to actually go find someone and speak out about it and do their best to try and make the circumstances better for everyone. So that was really encouraging to actually give psychologists a little bit of a prod <laughs> who in my experience haven't always been the most bold people in some circumstances, but just to make them realise you've got a lot of skills, you've got a lot of experience, you're worth listening to. So that was encouraging. Um, around the idea of diversity and inclusion, there's a lot of work gone into the document there. Recognising we're now working with a great diversity of different people from different cultures, they hold different beliefs. Um, some cultures, for example, just don't have any concept of, of mental health and how we might think of it in the Western world. So it's a case of, or, or, or during the, in the document, they actually encourage the psychologist to engage with that person and try and establish what mental health looks like and feels like and what it means to them. It recognises that some parts are, or people come from different cultures, maybe mental health, although they recognise what it is, there's maybe some kind of shame attached to actually talking about it. So it does encourage the sort of open mind approach to probing and, and trying to find out what the best way to engage with those particular people are. And again, it just suggests that maybe the location you're using could it be perhaps that rather than coming to the office or coming to some hospital or somewhere that's obviously uh, the place where the crazy people go or the place where people have difficulties, maybe consider somewhere use, um, that's a little bit more neutral that can work better for them. Maybe go to them, but especially if it's, for example, in a family setting. And the same applies cross-discipline because obviously there are different disciplines, be it sports psychology, health psychology, forensic psychology, occupational. The shape of the people you're working with and the nature of the work that you do is different. So it's highly likely, for example, with a sports psychologist, you get a very different result with your professional footballer if he came into the office versus if you went out and stood on the side of the pitch and saw how he interacted with the team. So that context is really desperately important. Headed briefly back into the diversity field, there's also um, an ex extensive reminders about the actual legislation which guides, informs and dictates, in fact, practice. So there's a, a wealth of information there and also pointers as to where uh, the psychologist might go to get even more information if it's something that particularly pertains to their practice or their development. Um, there is a lot of information to do with the LGBT um, population, which previously had been something that not necessarily psychologists, but members of the public were somewhat uncomfortable in that they didn't really know what those people might like to be called, for example. I mean, I only learned recently um, that somebody from that population, I said, well, what do you actually like to be called? And they said, trans people. Now, to me, that was an education because people's names are important to them. And if you don't take the time to actually ask, what is it you likely to, like to be called? What is it, or how do you describe what you do? You can only find out by asking them, and that's a very key message, is that you've got to ask those people that you work with how they like to be referred to and what it is they would like to do and how you would like to work with them. So just 
going back into it again as a kind of a recap is that, again, the BPS, it's one of its divisions, the Division of Clinical Psychology and the other divisions, have a history of working with members of the public in order that they can actually benefit them as best they can. And that was my invitation, along with my colleague Joe Hemingfield, was to look into this document before it was considered ready. And both of us certainly saw some of our observations had actually genuinely been taken on board and built into the subsequent pu publication. And, and just a reminder, in fact, that uh, having read this, I've been quite enthusiastic about the document and I've actually shared it among the training community and particularly trainees. And this document also relates to trainee psychologists. And I've met with a lot of enthusiasm to go and give some talks and some sort of guidance about how might people start to engage with it and how it might inform their training and also their subsequent practice. And just once again, the reminder is that the key theme is you've got to work with people. You can't tell them what to do. You've got to ask them how you're going to work together. And that's, I think, the most key theme is to ask. Thank you.